we'll continue. So after I was going to talk about the consequence of the inguinal canal. Um, basically, I want the contents are data in the female contents with female contents. So, female male or contents are just two chromatic quark. What was important to remember in so in females, it is the only content for like slip it in from MCQ the content and all of the, except the options in the inguinal nerve. I mean, so if they're asking you about the content of inguinal canal, they're much more than if it's a question asking about it for. About the inguinal canal, then the inguinal content. The sperm of Wait, okay, internet is still done. So, yeah, I'm back. I'll, I'll try to finish the lecture. No, no, I still have it. If I disconnect again, that we either I'll I'll, tell you, I'll ask you guys to WhatsApp if you guys prefer if you postpone it. Well, if you prefer, you just um, record it. That will let me know what you think. Um, for now, we'll just try to work with the bad internet. The last thing I was saying was al content. We learned al female content. If you made to male content, right? The al female content of the inguinal canal. In the around ligament of the uterus, if it's an inguinal nerve and obliterated, this is the renalis, which is basically an embryological um, structure that's no longer needed in the adult. If it's an lymphatic from the uterus, you know? so these are the contents of the female inguinal um, canal. I think female, it's only a spermatic cord, well, in your inguinal nerve. You know?
Sorry, one second. Okay, can you see now? I don't know what's up with the internet today. So I'm uh, going to email and then I'm kind of going around the limit of the uterus in one third, obliterate the surface of the dynamics and the lymphatics from the uterus, while feed the male to spermatic cord earlier in one owner. Kitani? And contents of the spermatic cord itself. That's super important. And it's probably like the most important thing in this lecture. For all contents of the spermatic cord. Yeah. So, as coverings of the spermatic cord, not as important, but I would still mention it. All coverings of the spermatic cord, the internal, middle, external. An internal covering is the spermatic fascia. Which is from the fascia transversalis. And middle is the cremasteric muscle and cremasteric fascia, which we already mentioned in non video, in an internal oblique. Ophil external, which is the external spermatic fascia, the human external oblique muscle, aponeurosis. Yani my way of remembering it is that he had a pigmy muscle. An internal, the human muscle kind of do a galil fascia transversalis. Well, middle, but you might have a kind of muscle here, internal oblique. To attack that, you need external, but you need external oblique. Make Now, if we and contents of the inguinal spermatic cord, the contents of the spermatic cord super important. And if you did, if you want to memorize one thing in abdomen, this is the thing you should memorize. So there are eight contents: three home structures, arteries, vein, wahda, and two nerves. So I remember it this way: so two structures. Three arteries, one vein, and two nerves. Yeah. So, at two structures are the vast difference, but obliterating processes for the dynamics. Well, these are the two structures. It has three arteries, which are a testicular artery, hemostatic artery, well, artery to vast difference. Titani vein wahda, and who will become pinniform plexus of veins. Titani two nerves, and who will autonomic nerves. What genital branch of genital femoral nerve? Come on. And again, to remember it best, remember two structures, three arteries. Remember in the two structures, three arteries, one vein, two nerves. At structures and vast difference will obliterate the processes by dynamics. At arteries, at testicular, at cremasteric, will arteries to vast difference. At um, vein, heal pampiniform plexus of veins. Will nerves, heal autonomic nerves, or genital branch of genital femoral nerve. Come on. So, like, make, make sure that you memorize these. They're very important. Come on. Clear, Yama. Clear. Okay, come on, perfect. So, next we'll talk about the clinicals of the um, inguinal canal or inguinal hernias. The are a very important um, thing to know. It's a area of questions to theaters lead to clinical questions, you know? But an inguinal hernia, yeah? So, 
first of all, we'll define what a hernia is. And a hernia is basically a protrusion of viscous, protrusion of viscous through a weakness of the anterior abdominal wall. Huh? So a linguinal hernia is a protrusion of viscous, oh, yeah, I need, um, viscera through a weakness of the anterior abdominal wall, yeah, if intestines or any of those viscera is coming out of the anterior abdominal wall through a weakness. So there has to be a weakness. Right? Two types, the direct or the indirect. Right? So indirect goes through the inguinal canal itself. Right? What direct goes directly through the anterior abdominal wall. So the best way to remember it is that when you say direct, you say directly through the wall. So it goes through the wall. Well, indirect goes inside the, the inguinal canal all the way till it reaches outside. Make sense? Yeah, and indirect comes through the canal in guinal. The direct comes through the abdominal wall. So this is the first thing you need to know. Is you know what does it go through? So the di indirect through the inguinal canal, but direct through the anterior abdominal wall. Huh? So a, a direct data a weakness of the anterior abdominal wall that is an area that's known as Hasselbach's triangle. It's very important to know. When it's known as Hasselbach's triangle, it's an area of weakness in the anterior abdominal wall. Yalla. Another thing you need to know is that where do you find the hernia? Yani, al hernia veil, whom they're different in relation to the inferior epigastric vessels. And if you look at the inferior epigastric vessels, one of them falls lateral to it, and one of them falls medial to it. And indirect, it's called lateral. Like in a direct, it's called medial. Um, if you look at the drawing here, these are the, the, the inferior pedastric vessels. Huh? And indirect, it becomes through the inguinal canal. Uh, sorry, and indirect. And indirect, it becomes through the inguinal canal. It's going to be lateral to the vessels. Lacking and become she directly through the abdominal wall, become she medially to the vessels. Make sense, Ima? Can you repeat? Yeah, of course. Sure. Like, yalla. Hey, that's there. We're now all having a direct to indirect, right? So when we're direct, just the main action she through the wall to wall it, and through the anterior abdominal wall. والحاجة دي إن أنا بنسمي الهسل باخ تراينجل تمام يلا هسل باخ تراينجل مش صلاك كتير أسي بس ركز إنه في دايركت والدايركت جوز through the anterior abdominal wall so the wall the wall اللي بتمشي في الوال يلا اللي بتمشي في الوال the wall دي معناته ماشية medially to the inferior epigastric vessels يعني هي الجوا ما هي برا أنا تمشي directly في الوال تمام في تاني واحدة اسمها indirect well, indirect day, but she flew the inguinal canal itself. And it pushed the inguinal, the deep ring, it pushed the superficial ring. Well, D, it comes laterally to the inferior epigastric vessels. Make sense? And it direct is medial. Like the indirect is lateral. A direct, then she flew through the wall directly. Like the indirect, then she flew the inguinal. And the easiest way to remember it is indirect through the in going on. Then out. So D becomes you through the whole. Cool. So the basically the idea of an indirect or direct in going on here. Is it clear? Or do you guys want me to repeat it again?
So again, I'll just repeat it one more time really quickly in indirect to direct. And indirect is directly through the inguinal canal and it's lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels, while a direct is, is directly through the abdomen and abdominal wall and it's medial to the inguinal, uh, to the inferior epigastric vessels. يلا إحنا قلنا في حالة الدايركت نسمي هنا الحاجة اسمها الحصل باخ ترينجل، right؟ يلا حصل باخ ترينجل ده sometimes they would ask you to name the boundaries of it. So a triangle ده it's a triangle bound by three structures. Bound by rectus muscle, bound by inferiorly by the inguinal ligament, bound um Laterally by the inferior epigastric vessels. Come on. Yeah, the triangle is in this one. Make sense? Yeah, the triangle is bound by three structures. It's bound by the rectus muscle. It's bound by the inguinal ligament. It's bound by the inferior epigastric vessel. A triangle is in this one. The area I will move in the direct inguinal hernia. Come on. So well, it's important to know the boundaries. Yeah, I don't really recall them ever asking you to know which boundary is which. I think they do ask you to know the boundaries. Yani, to know in its inferior epigastric vessel, rectus abdominis muscle, or inguinal ligament. At the latter day, we bound the Hasselbach's triangle. The Hasselbach's triangle, the, it is a weak point in the abdominal wall where a direct hernia can go through. Do you guys need me to repeat that? Clear. No, ma'am. Okay, that's great. Look at it. It basically summarizes the entire um, inguinal canal. If we go to the inguinal canal, go to the inguinal. Here, the content, the boundaries, the um, sorry, content, boundaries. و clinically the hernia. تمام. يلا في تاني one more thing we can talk about really quickly. اللي هو peritoneum. يلا peritoneum هو فيه a lot of details, a lot of things. لكن أنا I don't want to go through much because برضو as again it's not a really big area of questions. فا we're gonna go through it very lightly. فا the peritoneum by definition. Is a serous, thin serous membrane which lies in the abdominal cavity. It basically it resembles like a pleura, well pericardium, like it's in the abdomen. You know, here two types of peritoneum: the parietal peritoneum, or visceral peritoneum. The parietal just lines the abdominal wall. We barely talk about it. The visceral is the one that is actually engulfing the organs. You know. يلا بعد ذاك عندنا حاجة اسمها peritoneal cavity. This is the part that kind of matters. The name in the peritoneal cavity. The peritoneal cavity is formed of two sacs. One is the greater sac, one is the lesser sac. The greater sac is the main one, which is found all the way from the diaphragm to the pelvic cavity. It's the big one. The lesser sac is found behind the stomach. The lesser sac is not that important. What's important is a higher is the blood formant. Our mental foramen, which is basically a sac, an area, our foramen that is connecting the greater sac to the lesser sac. Ma? And how do I do this? I have here in the peritoneal cavity. The peritoneal cavity, we have two sacs: greater sac and lesser sac. The greater sac is the main one, the big one. Well, lesser sac is just found behind the stomach, which is you know. Oh, sorry, here. The lesser sac behind the stomach, that between it and between the greater sac, there is a foramen. A foramen, we need to mean an epiploid foramen. So, this is an area of extent. And sometimes they ask you about the epiploid form. You know, it's a foramen between the greater sac and the lesser sac. Come on. Is this part clear? Clear. Okay, 
began about um, the book format itself. People who like to memorize the relationships, what's anterior to it, what's posterior to it, and I wouldn't really memorize it except for one, which is that anteriorly to the epiploid foramen, fill port the hepatis, which is basically a portal vein, hepatic artery proper, or bile duct. That's important, you know. You know, anteriorly to the epiploid foramen, fill port the hepatis. It's very important. Why? Because it's used surgically and in surgery. They use the epiploic foramen to reach the portal vein with hepatic arch and bile duct. So it's important to know in the epiploic foramen anteriorly to it, until go al portal hepatis. Come on. And I'm going to go into more details because, uh, as I said, it's not that much of a questionable area or an area where they can ask too many questions. So we're just trying to cover the most important things. Like, yalla, baad ma kalam na ino al fishak, two sacs, greater or lesser. Connecting between them is the epiploic foramen, in front of it, fill porta hepatis. In the natani, omenta. Yella omenta, I'm going to put omenta or omenta. It's a fold of peritoneum. Come Connects the stomach. The hagitani. Come on. I'm going to put omentum. It means it folds. It's a peritoneum that folds to connect the stomach with another structure. It means the greater omentum or lesser omentum. The greater amentum, it means um, the stomach, the head transverse colon, and it goes down all the way till the end of the skin, the abdomen. Yani, what comes this? Yani, what comes she was directly? It goes from from the stomach all the way down, and it folds and comes back up and connects to the transverse colon. Make sense? And it doesn't directly do it, so it goes all the way downwards, makes a fold, and comes back up. So due to that, it covers most of the abdomen. Come on. And greater omentum is a fold of peritoneum, connecting middle stomach, goes all the way down, folds, and comes back up to, um, to be around the transverse colon. And it's really big. Come on. Yalla, the greater omentum, the people, is very important for one reason. You know, it's um, it has a function. You know, it prevents the spread of infection. It has a lot of macrophages. You know, يعني, you know, a greater amount of nemosinin in any case of infection, it would literally move towards the area of the infection and stop it from being, يعني, stopping the spread of infection. It's يعني, mentioned that you need, especially in cases of appendicitis, and the has about appendicitis. Our appendix was inflamed. The boom, the greater momentum goes to the direction of the infection, to the appendix, and it prevents the spread of the infection to the rest of the abdomen. And I mean, people should you know, the function of the is that it prevents infection, spread of infection. No, super important. A lesser amentum, a lesser amentum isn't that, that important. It just goes from the stomach to the inferior surface of the liver. So this is the lesser amentum. From the stomach to the liver. Yeah. So that is amentum greater or lesser amentum. It's like mesentery. A mesentery, some of them do their fold with peritoneum. But they connect the intestine to the posterior abdominal wall. So she will be connecting the intestines with the abdomen. The small intestine mesentery, the transverse colon mesentery, the sigmoid mesocolon, and the meso appendix. And it connects four of them. The small intestine, the transverse colon, the sigmoid colon, and the appendix. Okay? Ligaments. You know, ligaments, then I honestly am not sure if they're mentioned in the Hanat Tahir or not. I'll mention them regardless here. But that into the, depending on how much time you have, and if you have time to study them, go ahead. If you don't, I don't think it would be a problem. In the hepatogastric ligament, which is basically a thickening of the lesser omentum. 
and it's from the port to Hipata to the stomach. I would not, it's not important. Tani Hipata duodenal ligament, which is from the lesser amentum, Borgo, it's from the port to Hepatis, medudinum. Figas splenic ligament, from the greater curvature of the stomach to the hilum of the spleen, it contains the left gastrofibloid vessels. Tani lenorenal, or splenorenal ligament, from the hilum of the spleen to the left kidney. These are not that important. They're basically thickenings of the amentum that connect two organs together. Come on. And don't pay too much attention. I think I'm just mentioning them for the sake of not skipping anything. The other thing is my mental folds. You know, the folds, though, they're very, they're, they're somewhat important. Come on. The last folds. The folds, they're a branch. Who will be pulled? A ligament covered by peritoneum. Come on. And the folds, they're ligaments. Ligament, how are they not peritoneum? So in a median umbilical fold, if a medial umbilical fold, if a lateral umbilical fold, come on. Median di wahda fil nus. Median di wahda fil nus. If a medial, if a lateral, come on. They're just structures or ligaments covered by peritoneum, calling them folds. Well, later you're supposed to know what structure forms each ligament. So how each fold. يعني the median di wahda. It's formed by the median umbilical ligament, which is basically an obliterated uracus. The uracus leads to structure in the, um, in the embryo. Now I'm connecting the bladder with the umbilicus. So it's in the embryo, the uracus. In the adult, you've got median umbilical fold. Is this part clear, you know? Clear. تمام بيرفكت يعني البحث شنو؟ الليجمنت دي بيكون او حوالينا في um, peritoneum بيبقى اسمها فولد هم ثلاثه قاعدين اراوند ذا امبيليكس واحده اسمها ميديان امبيليكال فولد واحده اسمها ميديال امبيليكال فولد اثنين ميديال امبيليكال واثنين لاترال امبيليكال الميديان از باي ذا ميديان امبيليكال ليجمنت which is basically a uracus it's in an adult so it's useless الميديال امبيليكال فولد is basically by the medial umbilical ligament in the heel umbilical arteries. So we don't know, long, no longer use them. How many big ligaments? The ligaments there, the ligament and medial umbilical folds. A lateral, we usually the one that's important. And I would definitely recommend you remember this one. In the lateral, a lateral here formed by the lateral umbilical ligaments. When lateral umbilical ligaments normally inferior epigastric vessels that are. So, يعني the lateral umbilical ligaments there, they are the inferior epigastric vessels. And if you were to look down here, the inferior epigastric vessels themselves are what count as the lateral umbilical fold. Our lateral umbilical ligament, you know? so it's usually an area of question. They be like, what is the lateral umbilical form fold formed of? And your answer is supposed to be the inferior epigastric vessels. Come on. Is this clear, Yama? Yeah, very clear. Okay, come on. So this is basically it for today's lecture. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Do you think we'll be able to do the embryology and the histo before it comes? In Islam? Yeah, I definitely think it is. And it's an easy, easy mark. And I don't recommend you don't do it. At least, I'm going to do it.